Hello guys, welcome to another brand new day here on another farm. This is a foam TV and my name is a foam here. So today we are on a farm where we have set up a 5,000 capacity tarpaulin um, tank. So this is for catfish. So 5,000 capacity catfish tarpaulin ponds. And then as we always do on this channel, I like to take you through how we go about the project and what we have done so far, the details, so that it can motivate somebody and get the interest of somebody to also um, come and invest in farming in Africa. So today, this is your 5,000 capacity um, tank. This is a thousand capacity tarpaulin tank and as you can see the measurement as i always say is 15 feet by 10 feet now normally people want to compare the tarpaulin tanks and the concrete ponds and i always tell people that the tarpaulin tanks can last as long as 10 to 15 years if you have the right tarpaulin material so it is very important where or who is doing your tarpaulin pond for you, whether they use the right material. You can see the tenacity of this tarpaulin, very, very strong material. And so this thing under the right conditions can last you more than 10 to 15 years. So we have set up five of these tanks here. And today we came to do the stocking. As you can see, we've done the outlets, all the plumbing works uh, have been um, nicely done. And this owner, it has also provided shade you know the whole thing is roofed because the sun nowadays is very scorchy so it's, it's, it's too hot so it's very good that you have a, a very good shade for the fish so that they don't stress up too much because when they stress up too much they don't eat well and they don't grow well for you so you need to give them enough shade too and so we have stopped only two of these ponds now we brought five thousand fingerlings but we have stocked only two of the ponds. Like I said, if you look, even if we were to stock all 5,000 in one pond, still there will be enough space for these uh, fingerlings to feel okay. But we want to give them enough space, we want to let them move freely and you know, prevent stress and cannibalism. So we have stocked 2,500 here, 2,500 here. So we've stocked only two ponds out of the five. So we still have three ponds, which we are going to use after we do our sorting. So after we sort, we are going to put all, we are going to put the fish in all three ponds. Know that when they are young like this, as many as, like I said, 10,000 can even fish into this tarpaulin pond. As soon as they begin to grow from the fourth week to six week, one month, one and a half month, they grow out of the pond. They, they, this pond cannot fit all of them enough so we have to have extra ponds so that you can sort them into those extra ponds so this is the second pond where we've stocked uh, uh 2500 so we stocked only two of these ponds and then the rest are free and then can be used when we are sorting them and then we want to put the bigger fishes and we want to separate the bigger fishes from the smaller fishes now when we stock fingerlings like this there are some things that every farmer needs to know so anytime i stock um fingerlings i make sure we take you to some training some orientation to give you what i call a crash course on what you are going to do it's not everything that can be discussed one time but there are some key things that you need to know as a fish farmer when your fish is stocked. Number one is the feeding. The type of feed that you are going to use. Now, most fish farmers make this mistake as soon as they go and buy fingerlings. And of course, the hatcheries, the people they buy the fingerlings from also tell them that, oh, go and buy 2mm feed. That's what you use to start fingerlings. That assumption is not always correct. It depends on the size of the fingerlings that you bought. That will determine which feed you start with. Because if you go and buy fingerlings that are not even six weeks old, and you go and buy 2mm feed, chances are that most of the fish might not be able to eat that 2mm feed. 
so it's very important as fish farmers look the people who are selling the fingerlings to you they will tell you yes oh this one they can pick two mm they can pick two mm it's not always true you go and buy the two mm feed and you realize that most of the fish are not able to pick the two mm feed and so they start dying because they can't eat and then even if they eat you see that they are not growing well because you are giving them food which is not meant for them the the, the sizes of the feed is not meant for them so you have to take very good notice of this so when you bring them and then you realize that they cannot pick the two mm feed normally fish fingerlings normally fingerlings that are eight weeks and above eight weeks and above can easily pick two mm feed easily pick two mm feed and then shooters for maybe six weeks can easily pick two mm feed but most of the time if you get fingerlings that are less than eight weeks it's best you buy feed that is less than 2 mm so if you buy some of the foreign feed they have 1.2 mm to 2.2 mm so that is a range so you can get if you have the different sizes of the fish some of them can pick the 1.2 uh, 1.5 2 mm up to 2.2 so normally when i bring fingerlings like this i like to start with foreign feed because it has a range and then even if the fingerlings are not evenly sorted you can easily feed they can all easily feed and grow um average sizes for you so that's one thing you have to take care uh, take notice of when you are feeding fingerlings the size of the feed very very important then you have to look at the feeding times too the feeding times too normally fingerlings you feed them minimum three times in a day minimum three times in a day so if you buy fingerlings and you're feeding them once or twice a day that's not the best practice so you are feeding fingerlings three times in a day now the feeding pattern should be that the interval should be that minimum four to six hours interval every four to six hours you are feeding them so depending on when you start to feed them four hours or six hours time you feed them another four hours or six hours time you feed them again so these are things that as i mean beginners if you are starting to rare fish, very, very important information that you need to know. These are things that people don't normally share. So uh, feeding interval is very important. Now, the feeding pattern is also very important. Now, by feeding pattern, I'm talking about how you feed them. Now, you see, when you have a pond like this and you stocked about 2,500 fingerlings, you see, most of the time, the fish, the fingerlings may all converge at one point so when they converge at one point the the point or the side where they converge most that is where you pick for your feeding now when you're feeding fingerlings i've always said it in most of my videos there are different types of feeding major two type mainly two types of feeding now we have broadcasting and then we have the responsive feeding Broadcasting is when you come and then you just, you know, you just put the feed, you spread the feed across for the thing, uh, fish to eat. But when finger, when you bring in fingerlings, they are young like this. Broadcasting is not the most effective way of feeding them. So you choose the responsive feeding. Now you choose a spot like this. In this case, if we were feeding, we would have chosen that point because you can see that most of them um, have converged at that particular point. So you go, you stand there, and then you feed them at your arm's reach. So if it were to be this corner, I'm only feeding the fish from this side up to this side. Now all of them have converged here, most of them. And when you start feeding, the rest will all come down here. So you sprinkle the feed as gently as possible. It depends too whether the feed is um, floating feed or sinking feed. If it is sinking feed, you don't want the feed to go and get stuck at the bottom of the uh, pond without the fish eating. So you feed them as gently as you can. As gently as you can. As you feed them, you see that they are eating. They are picking the feed. So you continue feeding. It will get to a point where you put in the last feed. You realize that they are not rushing to pick the feed as they used to in the first instance. When it happens like that, you stop feeding. That is what we call the responsive feeding. You are feeding them as they respond. Now we have the broadcasting is when you come, you just take the feed and then you spread it across. It is most effective for grown catfish or grown fish. If they are grown, you don't want all of them struggling at one point to eat. 
it will cause injury it will cause causes cannibalism most of them are not able to eat effectively because they are big and they are, they want to you know um, um fight for their space to eat but when they are young it is very effective that you feed them at one point one you don't waste the feed you don't waste the feed and two you are able to ensure that you feed them as gently as you can and then the feed does not go and then um get stuck at the bottom of the pond as soon as they don't eat that feed it begins to ferment and then it pollutes the water produces ammonia which uh, pollutes the water so these things are very very important the feeding pattern number two you have to check at water management so when i do my orientation these are the things that i touch on feeding water management now for those of us who are not using the RAS method, the recirculatory uh, aquaculture system, but we are doing the, we are draining water directly from the pond. It is very important that you change your water depending on the parameters of the water too, the quality of water, you know, the oxygen level in the water, the pH level of the water. But all things being equal, it's important to change your water at least by the third day every other three days every three days is very very important that you change the water every three days so that you can ensure that there's enough oxygen the water is not polluted it is not dirty it's not stinking so it's very important that you change the water as regularly as every three days if you can every two days is, is the best but i mean the, the the latest you can go is three days you have to change the water you don't have to wait until the water begins to stink and becomes too dirty before you change the water. By that time, it might have caused an infection and your fish will begin to die. So water management is also very important. Again, before you change the water, you must note that you have, if you feed your fish, don't change the water until after two hours. So if you will change the water, change the water two hours after you have fed the fish, or you feed the fish two hours after you have changed the water. It's also very important. You have to note that. If you want to change the water, make sure that you change the water two hours after you have fed the fish. Or you change the water and wait two hours or more before you feed the fish. So that is also one thing that you have to note. Now when you are changing the water and it is a tarpaulin pond like this, you realize that where the outlet the drainage is connected the drainage cannot be fixed at the very bottom of the pond so definitely the pipe that um, the water is going to pass through is going to leave some space if, if you can look at this you see the space where the fish is under the drainage pipe that will always be so because the way the tank connector has been made that is how it's going to be but there's a way you can drain every water and that method is called flashing. Flashing is when you are draining the water, you realize that there's still some residue left or some dirt under the pond. So what you are going to do is that once you have opened the outlet, this valve, then you go and turn on the inlet, which is over there. So it is always important that when you fix your inlet, you fix it opposite where the outlet is. So you see, our outlet is here, but our inlet is over there. So that when you open the pipe and you want to flush the water out, it will drain and uh, push all the residue in the um, pond. Or even when you want to wash the pond and you have your outlet there, as the water comes, you um, inlet there, as the water comes, you drain or you help guide it to this outlet and then it drains everything out. So that is um what you need to know about water management too now one last thing that i um train people on when i stock the fish is how to um identify diseases and infections we call them uh, symptoms how do you know symptoms of uh, the diseases or how do you know something is wrong in your pond the first thing that you notice is that as soon as you see most of the fish standing in the water, now, 
You see, we stopped about 2,500 in this pond. If you look carefully, you see that this fish is standing still in the water. So you have two of them here, standing very still in the water. This is not a cause for alarm because we have only about two of them doing that. But the moment you come to your fish farm and you realize that you have more than, say, 100 or 200 of them, you have most of them standing, then there's a problem. It means that quickly we have to work on the water in the pond. Now, I always tell everybody that the first thing you do when you realize symptoms of disease or infection in the pond is to change the water. Anything that goes wrong in your fish farm, the first thing that you do as a fish farmer is change the water before you think of any other solution. So it's very, very important. If you realize fish are dying, anything that happens in your fish pond, the first thing is you change the water. When you change the water, before you apply any solution that you have to... So when you see them standing like this, the first thing is you change the water. Again, when you stock fingerlings or in your fish farm, the water is not supposed to smell. Now people call me and they're like, ah, but the fish won't it smell. Can you keep them in your house? Yes, your backyard. It's not supposed to smell. So the moment you come and then uh, about say 20 feet or less to the fish farm, you begin to smell some, you know, not too pleasant smell. That is bad for the fish farm. And it means that you have to change the water and then uh, find another solution um, to it. So these are the three basic things that you need to know as a fish farmer as soon as you stock your um, pond. You have to look at the feed, water management, and then how to identify disease and then how to control the disease. Um, I hope um, you this information will be very important and then you would have learned a thing or two from this video. If today is your first time on this channel, please click on the subscribe button, share this video. Um, ask questions or give us suggestions and leave us a comment and then we'll be sure to get back to you on your comment um, i hope to see you again another time on one of our most educative videos this is a phone tv see you again bye bye